In this video, we are going to do a real-world application of distributions, and I'm going to do that with a twist. I'm going to bring in an object from uh, Classic Cinema 4D and clone that using a distribution op, then add some noises, some animation, and at the end I'm going to show you how great the performance of the new C nodes is. So, what I can do, first of all, is get a tree. So I'm going to open a new document, I'm going to go to my standard layout and I'm going to go to the content browser and up here I'll type tree, I've already done that and I'm going to double click on the alder tree. So I need to do some changes to this so I'm going to go to the object manager, I'm going to select these to right click and say connect objects and delete and just grab this tree and delete everything else. The only thing we can take in the node system is the geometry, so I'm going to get rid of selections and all that. Fantastic, so I have a tree. Now, bring out your pen and paper. You know what that is, right? Okay, I'm going to press Command or Control I, and I want you to write down this number. 341,286 points. Fantastic. So now, in this scene, I'm going to switch to the nodal interface. In order to bring a legacy object in the node system, you need to type up here import and uh, use the legacy object import node. Then from the object manager, we need to drag this in the object link and uh, pay attention to this node over here when I say update parameter ports and it's going to bring anything it can find. Depending on the type of object, it will bring in different parameters. Good. Now I can actually make this invisible. I'm just using the data from it. I don't want it to be visible through the standard object manager. Now I can actually go and fold this. So I'm going to press Command or Control. I'm going to delete the materials. I don't need them. And press Command or Control and click here to get rid of that. So first of all, how do we introduce this into the nodes? Well, I need something called a geometry op. So geometry op. It's an operator and it takes geometry data, so the geometry, and it actually makes a operator. It actually adds all the information necessary so that we can present it in the scene. And here's the tree. So the next step is to make clones using a distribution. So I'm going to type C and type this tree and bring up the distribution op node. And I'm going to move this slightly to the left and make some more room so we can see the nodes. I'm going to take this and put it in here. I'm going to take this and put it in here. So now we have a bunch of trees spinning around and whatnot. So I'm going to clone this, or shall I say distribute this, on the surface of an object. So I'm going to go to Polygon Center, but now I need to put some geometry in here so that it knows what to clone on. So let's uh, find a primitive, and I'm going to use a primitive sphere and I'm going to make that sphere quite large because the tree is not uh, very small I'm going to make it 1300 I'm going to set it to be an icosahedron and I'm just going to go I'm going to close everything else up and twirl open the op output and get the geometry and put it in here and now we've got trees fantastic now I need to go and align them and because I can't see what's going on I'm going to make my segments six for now so I can actually see the trees I'm going to make this slightly bigger for now. I need to align them. So go to the distribution op, and uh, in the align, just set the up vector to none. And this will actually align the trees to the normal of my primitive, which is the sphere in this particular situation. Now you can see that the colors have been added automatically. So I just need to make all the colors the same. You don't need to do that, but you can do that if you want to. So let me add a, a color op. So C, color, and let's go all the way down here, color op. Let's put it in here, and uh, let's make the trees green. I wonder why. Anyway, we have our trees here. So everything is good to move on. The next little stage, and that will help us more in the visualization, is to add the sphere itself, the surface upon which we are cloning, uh, into the scene. So we need to create a hierarchy. So I'm going to bring in the children op, and I'm going to get my sphere and put it as child1. 
and get the output from this and put it as child 2 and connect up the children of and now we should have the sphere and you can see that there's one tree on each and every one of the centers of the polygon now let's go and take this and uh, set the segments to 20 so now we have plenty of trees I really like this my only problem currently is that there's no real variation so what I'm going to do is go and add some variation on the scale fantastic so what parameter is the scale within it's part of the matrix so I'm going to go and add a matrix operator in the whole op stream now I'm not going to touch anything in regards to the primitive op the one we are cloning on I want to put it in the stream that's actually creating our distribution so it's somewhere around here and what I'm actually doing now the strategy is that the distribution op is creating for each and every one of the clones a particular matrix so that it places it where each center of the polygon is and it orients it based on the normal I want to go and intercept that so what I'm going to do is insert my matrix in the stream there you go so everything is back to normal and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this matrix input and change something about it I'm going to change the scale parameter of it in order to do that I need to feed the scale separately from the matrix so I'm going to use a compose matrix down here and now I have access to the translation scale and rotation let me feed this in here first of all let's take a look at what this is doing if I go and change a value you will see that everything raises up because this is affecting the global Y position of all the matrices in order to affect the local matrices I need to do one little change I need to go to the matrix op and tell it to use the local transformations now if I click this now you can see that they're moving on the normal if I set it to zero then there's no difference because it's not moving in any direction but now that this local transformation is on and I add let's say 100 they're gonna move in their normal direction if I put 1000 you can see exactly what's going on fantastic I'm gonna set this to zero what I'm going to do is use some method to randomize the scale so that each tree has a different overall scale and then I'm going to add some sort of animation to that now I could use what's called a hash node which creates all sorts of different random numbers but in this particular case I'm actually going to use a noise so let me go here type C and type noise and I'm going to use the sample noise because it allows us to create a noise based on an input position this input position will be based on the position of each tree which parameter contains the position that's the matrix but I only need to get the translation from the matrix so I need to press C decompose matrix and from these matrices that iteration of matrices I'm gonna get the translation which is the position of each tree I'm gonna feed it in this value so that we have that noise sampling and then I can feed this into the scale now you can see now that the trees have some random scaling if you want to control the minimum and maximum scale because a sample noise exports a black and white noise a grayscale noise so all the values are from 0 to 1 I can put between here a range mapper and I'm going to stick the range mapper here and I'm going to control what the minimum and maximum values are I'm going to put the minimum at 1 so we have the original size of the tree and the maximum let's say 2 so now all my trees are between normal scale the actual scale we had and two times the size so you can play with these and control how much difference you're going to have between the trees you can make this three and you can do whatever you want 
So I have that way of randomizing the scale. The last tidbit I'm going to add to this to make it a bit more fun is my noise allows me to put some sort of time progression into it. So I'm going to type C and find the time node that gives me all the different times, the frames and all that. I'm going to get the scene time and I'm going to put it in the time. And now if I press play, you will see that I have trees that scale up and down. Fantastic. So let's try something. I'm going to go to my primitive op and I'm going to set my segments from 20 to 50. If I press play now, you'll see that it's still moving and I did a test before and this is about four and a half frames per second. So how many points are we moving around at four and a half frames per second? Well, first of all, let's go and find out how many trees we have. I want to find this using my console out so I can print something over here. You can see this is the number. I'm just showing you how you can go and get this number. Then I'm going to go and get the get count because this is going to read an array. Let's go and get the arrays and put it in here. And I'm going to get the count and put it in the console. And uh, just because I need to connect it somewhere, I'm going to connect the out into the color. And you can see we have 2,000 trees. So I can go and uh, delete this and delete this. We have 2,000 trees. What happens if we multiply 2,000 trees? Remember, we had 340,000 points. If I multiply 340,000 by 2,000, this is what I get. I get 680 million points. What you're seeing here animating at four and a half frames per second on my over 10 year old Mac with a 480 RX video card, which is a low end gaming card, which you can't even buy anymore, is 680 million points moving. Now, I don't know if you've been impressed uh, lately by anything, but uh, this impresses me every time I do it. So with this example, you get an idea of how you are going to set up some distributions and add some meaningful function to them. And you can see the performance of the new node system. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get easier. But I thought I'd show you how this works anyhow. More exciting stuff coming.